testing, testing. Exercise 17. In this exercise, we learn how to use the equations editor inside SOLIDWORKS to apply changes to a model automatically on demand. When we change one dimension, it updates others. So let's begin with the new part file. Select the front plane and start a sketch. Draw a rectangle off of the origin to the lower left. Smart dimension them at 4 wide by 2 inches high. Use the sketch fillet at 1 inch at the corner. Go to features and extrude. Extrude it back 1.5 inches. Now we need to go ahead and we're going to add some draft on it. So let's select draft, manual, neutral plane, select the underside for the neutral plane, flip the arrow so it points up, one degree of draft, and then the faces of draft will be the three faces that are attached right in the front here. Hit apply. Now we could go ahead and select this bottom face, draw a circle at that tangent edge. Mention it at point two five. The features extrude boss, flip it up. It should be one point five five with one degree of draft. Go to linear pattern, select the edge. It should be spaced point two apart, sixteen instances. The green check. Now we're going to go ahead and turn on the annotations by right clicking on annotations and show feature dimensions. We'll also add an annotation that we could use as uh, part of our equation. So we'll go normal 2 and select this face, start a sketch, take the line tool, or actually the center line, zoom up to the very first boss and draw a connecting line between both vertexes of the outer edge as they come in contact delete any extra lines that you might create. It should be black when it's done. Go to Smart Dimension and dimension it vertically. Leave it as a driven dimension by hitting OK. Now on the left, the primary value will change that to X at Sketch 3. Hit the green check mark and rebuild. The other dimensions will appear. Go to View and turn on dimension names. Change the 4 inch dimensions name to width. Change the 1 inch radius to so D3 to radius. Change the model to wireframe to pull out the extra dimensions and parameters that are locked in the model. and then change it back to shaded with edges. The 16 is going to be the number of rib copies. So we'll just type in the D1, rib copies. The 0 .20 dimension is going to be the pattern distance. So we click on that, go to primary value, pattern distance. And that should be all we need. Now we can proceed with creating this. We're going to hit rebuild and save. And we'll save this as E17. Now we're going to go ahead and make a little room here so we can bring up the equations editor. Click on the white section of the screen so you don't have anything selected. Or hit escape. Go to tools and find equations. The equations editor normally isn't quite this long. It's usually a bit more truncated. But in this case, we're going to go ahead and uh, make sure that you can see the equations you need to, the variables you need to add. And click underneath equations under add equation in this cell. And we'll proceed to select the rib copies, which is the number 16. And then it will be equal to 
and we want to go to functions here and find integer. This will prevent like if we get something like 16.5 ribs, it's doesn't know what to do at this point, so an integer will convert it to the next up to a whole number. And then you'll have some parentheses, put in an extra parenthesis, so it's equal to integer parenthesis parenthesis, and then width, type in minus the radius. And now we can put in another close parenthesis. And then we'll put in divided by, and this is where you need to make a little bit more room. So I've, been, I've had trouble with this one where there's not enough room in here. Okay, and then, oops, actually I didn't need that last one just yet. Um, so we have the parentheses divided by, and now we could select the x. Now normally if it's a reference dimension, SOLIDWORKS doesn't recommend that you use reference dimensions in their equations. In this case, it's a simple enough equation that it actually works, but in certain instances, it could actually cause some trouble with the cyc uh, cyclic re a redundant error. So in this case, we'll just leave it. We'll get a little notice saying that it might be an issue, but not to worry. It will actually still work on this. So we're going to go ahead and close parentheses, type in plus 1 and then click on the cell above it. Again, it'll turn yellow over here, like I mentioned before. It's just letting you know that there might be some issues with it. Now we could click on below it, and we'll add the second equation to clean up. So this next one is going to be the pattern distance is equal to parenthesis width minus the radius parentheses divided by parentheses rib copies minus 1 close parentheses then click up above it again it will turn yellow it will let you know it's a potential circular re reference it will still work we can go ahead and hit OK We'll go ahead and we'll finish this off now with using the mirror tool. Face to mirror, select the side face and make sure bodies to mirror, not faces, not features, but bodies to mirror is clicked on. Select the entire body and apply. Follow the same instructions on this next side. Mirror. Uh, if this is listed in here, clear that. We don't want any features. We want the mirror face plane, so this face here and then bodies to mirror. That's very important. You have to click on that and hit apply. All right, let's rebuild and save it. And now to test it out. In theory, the way we set up this equation is if we ever adjust the width, we change it to three, for example, and hit rebuild. It will update, and the rib stack updates properly. It stays, stays nice and smooth. If we increase it, Let's increase it to try and use whole numbers. Let's increase it to six. And hit rebuild. Again, the rib stack updates. And that's pretty much it. Now, if you put in some additional numbers, sometimes you have to hit rebuild as well. You might sometimes get errors, but um, for the most part, it should work pretty well. And that ends exercise 17.